Hello and welcome to episode 43 of the What Shara Made podcast. Thank you for joining me today and welcome back if you are a returning viewer and a big hello if you're a brand new viewer for this episode. I've got a, quite a few whips, what's new, and several FOs, so that's good. I've got some spinning and I've got some acquisitions, so I might as well dive straight in with my whips. I might start with a half object <laughs> and uh, I'm hanging out saving the other half to do for the Aussie Along Cal that I'm co-hosting with uh, Cole Girl from the Yarn Adelaide podcast and uh, Tamara from the Tans Crafty Knits podcast and Hannah from the Rosie Knits podcast. Uh, and in that cow, whips, as long as they're no more than 50% done, are accepted. So I've knit one sock and I'm saving the other sock for the cow. <laughs> so I finished this this morning and the amazing, oh my god, I'm so in love with it. self strapping yarn is from uh, the lovely Hannah of the Rosehip Island Etsy shop and she does some pretty amazing self striping like check that out oh my god I love it so much and the cuff heel and toes are done in a sock yarn from a yarn shop in Hobart I think called the stash cupboard I might be wrong uh, so I thought I would pair two Tasmanian yarns together uh, Rosie Pyland is a Tassie yarn as well so uh, I think that's gonna be pretty cool when they're a pair and I should be able to then at least have one finished object for the cow <laughs> oh, that's filling me with confidence there so that's my first whip, sort of half object, and I hope to cast on tomorrow, which is the beginning of the cow. So that's that one. My next whip is, you've seen this before, but last time you saw it, it there wasn't a whole lot to it. And to be honest, there's not a whole lot more to it this time. Uh, it's the True Friend Sweater by Vera Valle Mackey, and... It's still not looking like a sweater, but I promise it is a sweater. <laughs> you can see how the two yarns are striping together now, and I'm really loving the way they look. It's coming up so beautifully, the solid with the hand-dyed yarn. So the solid, this navy blue here, is a baby llama bamboo blend, which is an unusual blend, but boy is it a luxurious it just feels so beautiful and it's kind of got a cool feeling to it because of the bamboo um, and because this is a fingering weight or four ply sweater I think it might be a nice light piece to wear in um, trans seasonal weather <laughs> but I can layer it up in colder weather as well and it'll still be beautiful so I think that's going to be a nice versatile sweater if you're not familiar with the true friend sweater what happens with it is maybe it will make more sense not really <laughs> this is the head hole and you've got the front and the back at this stage they're both identical pretty much a little bit of shaping around the neckline and you are knitting in the round all the way around here um, doing some increases and decreases at certain points to get the shaping 
and eventually this is going to be the sweater it's so hard to describe <laughs> maybe this time i will put in put in a picture uh, of the sweater so you can tell what it looks like maybe here okay maybe i put in a picture just then maybe i didn't <laughs> so that's that whip when i'm measuring it i'm not even a quarter of the way through the striping section so if you can imagine this striping section is going to come out to about here so from there all the way out to about here and it is going to make the sweater gigantic and i it's going to be really long and really wide and i feel like i might drown in it if it's that big so um it's not a difficult pattern to adjust when it gets to the size you like so I still want to keep it a bit boxy, but not like the size of a marquee. So um, I'm going to keep going and keep measuring and trying out a few things and I'll see how I go. But I don't think I'm going to make it as big as the actual pattern is stating. Um, I've got enough yarn to do that if I, if I get to it and it feels like it's, it's going to be all right. But we'll see how we go. I've already got... 500 stitches on there so each row takes a little bit of time <laughs> but I don't mind it's it's really mindless knitting it's um, pretty much all knit except for the intersections of increases and decreases and they're all really easy anyway so <coughs> excuse me um, it's not a difficult knit at all it's just taking a really long time but hopefully um, I'm trying to do two stripes a day <laughs> uh, and that will hopefully mean I, it's finished just in time for the cool weather to arrive uh, and I'm housing it in my awesome cactus bag from Girl So Sheepy. But that is that whip. I just have to have a drink of tea, I've got a bit of a sore throat. <sighs> That's better. My next whip is my eyeball shawl oh with a crochet hook stuck in it uh, and you can kind of see <laughs> what's happening here this is indeed the pupil and this is the iris and it's growing and this has got quite a few stitches on it too and i've got a few more rows to go before uh, the iris is finished and i can start doing the sclera but uh, it's it's coming up beautifully. I'm really enjoying this green yarn. Oh gosh, I love the way that is coming out. And I'm really excited about this shawl. And I've been using this as my travel knitting because literally all I have to do is knit around and around and around and around. And around. Um, I think for like 30 odd rows. So um, I know I don't really have to count anything like if I'm sitting on the bus or the train or something I can just keep knitting because it's going to be a while before I'm at that many rows uh, so I'm really really enjoying that and this is the eyeball shawl by Stephen West uh, it's really cool really excited about finishing that because I'm really excited about wearing it I think it's going to be amazing and that's been housed in my Mrs. Brown's bags. And isn't that cool? Oh God, I love it so much. I would seriously love a shirt or a dress in that. I just think that'd be wild. Now, my next whip. <laughs> this is one you would have seen, <clears throat> excuse me, last year. I started it, I don't know, towards the end of last year. And I haven't really done a lot of work on it. So this is another one, just like my true friend sweater, where I'm trying to do two stripes a day. This, I'm trying to just get at least a couple of rows done a day. I started off trying to do a stripe a day, but it wasn't happening. So you can see it's a bottom-up sweater. It's knit in the round. It's got a split hem with a drop hem at the back, a little lower. Um... And it's going to be pretty cute, I think. And it, it's cotton, so it's going to be a nice light piece. But I think keep it in winter. It's on a milder day. If I've got it layered with something warm underneath, I'm sure I can still wear it in winter too. So um, 
that's this piece. I'm getting a bit more done on it. <laughs> I'd love to have it finished because I just want to wear it. Um, it's been knit in this yarn here from Mull and the Gang. It's called Billie Jean and I think the this mottled colour is the dirty denim. That's the colour way there. Um, and as you can see, it's 60% re upcycled denim and 40% upcycled raw cotton. So it's a pretty interesting mix uh, and I'm really uh, enjoying it. Uh, it's a little bit splitty and you do have to have a little bit of patience when you're knitting it. Um, but pretty much just like any cotton really. Um, and it's not, you know, it's not painful to knit. I am enjoying it and I think I'm really, really going to enjoy the finished piece. So that is my other active whip that I'm trying to work on every day, just a little bit. If I just do, even if I just do a row a day, um, it's going to be better than just sitting in a project bag, not growing at all. So I'm enjoying that one. I can't wait to finish it so I can wear it. My next whip is something that I have been wanting to start for months and I had the ball sitting next to me on my desk so that it was kind of haunting me every day uh, when I saw it and I could resist and no longer. So let me just sort out the ball beautifully wound uh, as usual. <laughs> So this is what it's looking like. Uh, it's some hand spun yarn that I spun last year uh, from a, I believe it's, it's what they call an art bat. So it was all sorts of everything blended into this bat. There's glittery stuff, there's mohair, there's silk, there's bamboo, there's linen, there's various types of wools. Um, it was a pretty interesting spin because there were so many different textures and fibers going on. Uh, so it wasn't all that even, but I knew I never thought it was going to be even and smooth or anything like that. So I wasn't too worried about that. And I was just enjoying all the different textures. And initially I had thought I was going to knit an infinity cowl. Um, but like a big long infinity scarf in garter stitch chevrons. But when I started doing that yesterday, I cast it on yesterday, it was not, it wasn't looking great and it was, I wasn't showing off the yarn like I wanted it to. So I tried a few different stitch patterns and finally I decided on this and I'm still not entirely sold on it being the right stitch for the yarn, but I'm, I, I, I do really like it and I think I need to just stick to it and go for it because it's, um, I'll be here for years trying to think of something else. So I'm trying not to dangle the needles on the table. So this is how it's knitting up and it's a pretty interesting texture. The yarn itself is interesting, but the stitch is making it more textury. So it's a bit of an unusual cable that's like a you've got a one stitch crossing over two stitches, kind of a cable. Anyway, I'm really enjoying the texture. I'm liking the way the colours are coming up. At first I was a bit worried about this section, like it just sort of looks muddled, which it is. <laughs> but um, I like it. I like it. I like it. So I'm about a quarter of the way through. So the, um, the infinity loop scarf is going to keep going three more times of this. And then I'm going to... Uh, graft it here. It's um I've done a provisional cast on there and yeah I'm I'm quite enjoying it. 
you get a bit of an idea of the texture out there. And it's been really interesting to knit just to see how the colours are coming up and um, what colour is going to happen next and how the different textures feel together and it's it's been really interesting I'm really enjoying it and I'm really enjoying this stitch pattern and I think I want to apply it to some new designs that are sort of floating around in my head uh, and I think it's going to work well with an idea that I already kind of half had but we'll see we'll see just excuse me for a minute, I'm going to shut the door because there is a bird having a little meltdown out the front and it's really annoying me, so it's possibly annoying you if you can hear it. Hold on one moment. And we're back. <laughs> um, it's sitting right outside the window having its little uh, meltdown and uh, I like swished my arms at it and it won't go away, so hmm, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's this whip and I'm really looking forward to sitting down and working on it for a few more repeats of the pattern um, to uh, to get it growing a bit more uh, as soon as I finish filming here so that's that whip Oops, sorry about the needles my next whip is a spinning whip now what I've been doing is some little test spins. Um, this first one was just a test spin to see how this fibre was going to work. And when I first started spinning it, I was not impressed. I did not like it at all. And I gave up pretty quickly. And I just, I was really disappointed because I've had this fibre. I'll show you the fibre because it's pretty interesting. It's this here. What you can see is it's what is called pencil roving. So it's not really usable as a yarn as it is because it will just break uh, because it's not spun at all. It's partially felted. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but you can see there it just like comes apart. You you can't knit with that. Well you probably could, but it would be an absolute nightmare and the thing you made out of it would just break. So, I think the intention for this stuff is that you spin it. So it's, it's like a pre-drafted roving and you spin it. I think that's what the intention is. I can't think of anything else you could possibly use it for successfully. Um, it's a Noro and I think it's called like a rainbow wheel or something like that I'm possibly making that name up um, anyway the colors are totally awesome they're right up my alley oh look you can see my necklace right through it hmm. um, and it feels quite soft and lovely but when I started spinning it the singles were all lumpy and bumpy and there wasn't really anything I could do about it I couldn't smooth them out um, and I really wasn't all that excited about what the singles looked like so I stopped spinning straight away I probably I did about five minutes of spinning on it maybe not even that um, and then I decided after I took it off the wheel and just sort of put it to the side and started spinning something else and then I, a few hours later I thought I should ply that and see if it once it's plied maybe it looks a bit better um, and it improved it <laughs> slightly, but I just can't think what I would ever use it for. But I might spin it and see if um, my niece wants it because she, this I think would appeal to her. Um, but you can sort of get an idea of what the yarn looks like. It's pretty fluffy. That's what you're seeing is pretty accurate. Um, see there that is pretty accurate to what it looks like I don't mind it actually now that I'm looking at it maybe I do like it and perhaps once I get some of the darker colors happening as well it might appeal to be a bit more I'm just not sure what I would make out of it I mean when I finished it that's my dog barking sorry she can probably like see someone walking past outside um, uh, I, I don't know what I'd make out of it, but 
it could make a pretty groovy hat or a pretty groovy cowl like with some sort of chunky textured stitch I think that would work quite nicely with this big fat fluffy yarn it's really spongy uh, and that's quite a nice quality but yeah I might keep going with it it was super quick just being because it's already drafted you're literally just feeding it through the wheel um, so maybe I'll do that I don't know I'll give it a go <laughs> um, but that was that test test spin then I did another little test spin and I've got um, this idea that I want to make a jumper a sweater and I think I want it to be boxy and with cables but I'm not like I'm gonna make up the design but I'm not entirely sold on exactly what it's getting, going to look like but I've got the idea in my head of what I want the yarn to look like I want a deep red plied with a beige or a bone or something like that um, so it's just bubble pulled the whole way along uh, and then knit with that so it's it has a nice mild effect when it's knit up and I got the red I got some red fiber that I really like the color of and I just got a hundred grams of it um, and I got a beigey kind of peach color it's called slash but it's like a beigey peach color and I got 100 grams of that and I got 100 grams of a BFL, they call it a humbug blend and it's all the different natural colours just blended together in a, um, in a, in some roving. And I did a little test spin, I don't know how well this is going to show up, I probably should have taken it off the bobbin but never mind, you'll see it. I'm not particularly precious about what's happening here because it's just a test spin. So what I got when I just did, I spun some red singles and I spun some of the peach flesh tone singles and I spun some of the humbug singles and then I just applied them all together. I had some of the humbug uh, singles left over and that's what that's come out like. It's not exactly how I'm going to spin it for the sweater but you get the idea of what those colours look like together. Um, and I really like that. I'd happily knit a sweater out of that hand spun yarn, but that all the different natural colours um, of the BFL apply together. I really enjoy that. Then you can see I just applied it all together on the same button. So it was a test spin, so I didn't really care what was happening. Um, and then this is the red with the humbug and you've got some darker colours here but it moves along into some lighter colours as well and I really like the way that has come out. I love that some of it's dark and some of it's light, like really light. So if you compare say for example that and that together I think once that's knitted up that's going to look pretty cool what do you reckon then I also did this might take me a while it's all very interesting watching me unwind yarn um, I did some of the peach and red together oh, it might take me too long to undo all this um, and I quite like it as well and I think I can really only do one if I did two with the um, the same yarn I did one with the red and the flesh and one with the red and the humbug uh, like one sweater out of each they'd be too similar and it would look it'd be a bit strange to have two such similar sweaters in um, don't mind me, this is all getting a bit weird. I should have unwound it. I think that was my plan before I started filming, but I totally forgot. Um, I think that would be too weird, that combination. Um, having two sweaters almost identical, but not quite. So I think it's either, it's just going to be the humbug or the flesh. Maybe that's going to take me too long. That's the flesh anyway. That's the red with the flesh. 
So it does look cool and that was initially exactly what I was imagining. So maybe that will be it. But I think what I'm going to do is knit them up into a little swatch and see which one I like better. Um, and this barber pole yarn also might not work with cables. It might be pointless to do cables in such a strong contrast barber pole in yarn uh, because the the cables might just disisappear and the two fly two ply like this as well isn't always excellent for cables either cables work better with a three ply but we'll see I'll do some little swatches and we'll see what happens now I've got a another spin here that I did uh, when I ordered that those colors I also got from the same place uh, a 100 gram bump of some Romney uh, fiber and I don't think I've ever felt Romney yarn my commercially manufactured Romney and I have definitely never spun any Romney before but my dad grew up on a Romney farm uh, Romney sheep and he's quite familiar with them um, but they're traditionally farmed for meat not for their wool they have a very long staple wool and they're great in um, harsh conditions so it's got that hardy coat uh, but I thought I'll try it I didn't really know a lot about it except for what dad had told me about it and I knew it had a really long staple so I got some and when I got the fiber it was pretty scratchy and dad said he remembered it being much much softer um, he hasn't lived on the farm for many 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 years since before I was born um, and he remembered it being softer but I was like oh I don't know um, and because I've got nothing to compare it to I don't know if this Romney is a good example of Romney maybe other Romney is much 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 softer I don't know anyway I got some it was pretty scratchy and I spun the singles and I then chain plied them and I got this pretty nice like it looks nice um, don't mind all those ties on there uh, and it's got a nice spring to it it's got a high energy um, feel to it and after I um, gave it a wash gave it a bit of a soak and let it dry out in the Sun it has softened up considerably but it is still not next to skin wear even for someone like me who does not mind scratchy wool at all against my skin, I quite like it. Um, this is pretty hardcore. Um, it's, uh, I don't know what you would use it for. Like, mm, I'm not sure. It would make an awesome pair of slippers, but I don't want slippers. I've already got slippers. Um, but I have got some hand spun North Ronalds yarn which is about the same level of scratchiness and it is blue and it's beautiful and it's also chain plied and it's a roughly the same weight as this as well what I'm thinking is maybe they will make a nice color work project together um, and I'm thinking maybe mittens I could definitely tolerate mittens in this scratchiness um, and I think because it's pretty hardcore like it's real sturdy um, it would be ideal for mittens um, because they're going to get a lot of action so I'm not sure but that was another spinning project that I did and that was such a fast spin it literally just flew onto the wheel and then flew off and then flew into a chain ply it was it was actually quite a pleasure to spin um, because the thing that I had spun immediately prior to this was pretty intense <laughs> and it was not a fast spin at all it took me I've, over a week um, of pretty intense work on it to spin 200 grams and I'm going to put up a picture of that yarn that I am describing hopefully here
And I spun that yarn at the request of one of my lovely knitty friends. Um, we went to a show last year, maybe the year before. <laughs> In fact, I think it was the year before, 2015. And she bought these two braids of this beautiful fibre. It was um, Merino, Shetland, Baby Alpaca and Bamboo in the blend. And it was gorgeous. And I said I would spin it for her. And then she changed her mind and, and decided she wanted to spin it. And then didn't get around to it and gave it back to me and asked if I could spin it for her for her birthday and of course I will do that my pleasure and I did and it was it was not for the faint-hearted it was pretty it wasn't difficult to spin but I had to really concentrate on it um, I was trying to do some pretty fine singles because I wanted to end up with a nice light fingering weight yarn and it just kept breaking and it it was well maybe it was a difficult spin really but I still really enjoyed it even though it was intense and it seemed to go forever uh, it was awesome and once I started applying it oh, the yarn oh my god it's just so amazing and I'm so glad I persevered with it and I'm so glad that I kept my patience and <laughs> um, kept doing it as fine as um, I had planned because in the end I got 607 meters from 200 grams of this fiber and that is the longest finest spin I've ever done and I mean I've spun more yarn like for example sweater quantities and stuff but in the one piece <laughs> that's the longest single piece of yarn that I've made um, and it was definitely worth it and my friend who I spun it for really likes it and she's already started swatching for a shawl so um, that was excellent that was a good spin now I've got a couple of FOs Not sure if I have shown you these when they were a whip or if I've just knitted them in between the last filming and this one but anyway here they are I finished a pair of really groovy socks Ta -da! and what you'll see is they almost match and I wanted to be as economical with the yarn as possible in the hopes that I might be able to make a second pair out of the one ball. Uh, so I thought I'm not going to try and match the stripes, I'll just start knitting the second sock where it, um, where it starts. I won't do any sort of yarn management, I'll just start knitting. So that's what I did and <laughs> sort of unfortunately, because I wanted random, um, they almost just incidentally match but only almost it's like half a stripe the difference and that's going to bug me more than having totally random stripes but never mind i'm sure i'll cope <laughs> i still am madly in love with these so i don't really care but how cool and groovy are these socks and it's a self-patterning yarn of course i didn't do any extra work I just knit totally vanilla socks with a fish lips kiss heel I didn't even stop halfway to or do any sort of yarn management there I just did the fish lips kiss heel where it happened and went with it so you can see there I love these so much and this yarn is I believe the brand is Nako and the um, type of yarn is Boho, but I could be wrong. And it is Colorway 81263, just in case you're wondering. Um, and 
and it's awesome. It's got the feel of it. It's not the softest yarn I've ever used, but it's not scratchy or anything. It's got that Regia or Opal kind of a feel to it, probably more Regia. Um, they feel pretty hardy. They feel pretty hardy. Um, and it's... They look good, and I've blocked them, and they softened up dramatically, actually, on upon blocking. But yeah, really, really love these, and I cannot wait for the weather to cool down so I can wear these groovy little socks. Really cool. And I made these out of this yarn after seeing a pair that Hope from the Fiber Alchemist, no, the Fiber Morphics podcast. Um, she made some. Hope made some and I fell in love with them straight away as soon as I saw Hope so I knew I needed a pair of those socks. So I tracked down the yarn and made myself a pair and I'm so happy I did. They were probably cool with the black. Anyway, that's that finished object. My next finished object is a beautiful hat and I'm so happy with it. Um, I did a test knit for the lovely Julianne of the My Mudlings podcast. Hello Julianne, if you're watching, here is the hat. So, check it out. Oh my god, it's so pretty. I don't know if it's going to be apparent, but on the crown, it has the most amazing decorative decreases. And they make a star shape. Oh, you can sort of see. Yeah, you can see it. They make a beautiful star so cool um, and this is called this pattern that I test knit is called the Amelia Beret and I believe it's due out mid-February and the yarn I've used was deep deep stash I think I got it at the first or second um, Australian sheep and wool show in Bendigo that I attended which would make it between eight and nine years old uh, so I'm pretty pleased to get that out of my stash. And that means I can enter it into Julianne's, um, the My Muddlings uh, stash down cow, as well as my cow. That's also a stash busting cow. So that's pretty cool. I loved a beautifully written pattern, really easy to follow and pretty quick knit, pretty intuitive. You can see what's happening and... Oh, I love it. Anyway, I'll show you what it looks like on. So I've made the slouchy version. And I really like it. You have the option of blocking it into more of a traditional beret style, like blocking it over a plate, for example. Um, but I, I thought I could see that the other test knitters had all blocked theirs beret style. So I thought I would go the other way and block mine beanie style. And that's what I did. I really love it. It's oh, The wool's really yummy. Um, love it. I love that colour. Um, it's, yeah, beautiful. Love it. So gorgeous. That lace is so groovy. And I really, I can't wait to cast on another one and make another one. And fix my hair. Um, I think I'll make one out of a non-variegated yarn and maybe lighter so you can really experience the beautiful lace pen. So that's that finished object. My next finished object, let me just remove something from it that might be a bit too controversial for the podcast. Um, and it is a little bit political, but I don't care. So I made a pussy hat and you would have seen these everywhere already particularly over the last weekend and I <laughs> I didn't know that I was going to go to the women's march in Melbourne until maybe eight hours before I went there <laughs> my sister texted me at about midnight on the Friday and said do you want to come to the women's march with me and prior to that I had actually had something else planned for that day and um, that had fallen through literally minutes before my sister texted me and so of course I said yes I would love to go to the women's march with you and on my way to like literally running to the bus stop when I got up the next day um, I 
rang my local yarn store and as I was running <laughs> to the bus and said, can you please put aside this particular yarn and these needles and um, I'm going to come in and grab them before I get on the bus because I'm on my way to the women's march. Women's march. And my lovely uh, local yarn store said yes. And so I ran to the yarn store, I picked up my yarn and my needles and then I ran to the bus. And on the bus trip to the Women's March, I knit a hat. And I don't think I've ever knit quite so fast in my life. Thankfully it's nice chunky yarn, like it's a, it's a super bulky and I used 7mm needles. So it was pretty, like it was going to be a quick knit anyway, but I was still knitting pretty quick. Um, and then I was kitchenering the top as I was walking through the train station to meet my sister. Um, I've never walked and kitchened at the same time. I can't say I recommend it. It's definitely better as a sitting down job. <laughs> um, but I managed it and it fits and it's pretty cool. And it was a little bit hot to wear it on the day, but I persevered. Here we go. It's so cute. I love it. Um, and I don't think the Women's March will be the only time I wear this. Uh, I really like it. I didn't think I liked pink, but maybe I do. Hmm. Anyway, that is my little pussy hat. And I was wondering, the March was awesome. Um, and I saw some, bumped into some people that I hadn't seen for years. And that was really nice. So... Um, that was cool. And then uh, and I had my sister's little boy with us and her partner and uh, that was great. Saw some brilliant signs uh, and it was just really great to see the solidarity all over the world <laughs> with the pink hats and the spirit that it was done in. It was really, really made me feel like a lot of my hope had been restored um, but you know it's crazy that we still have to protest these sorts of things but there we are um, so that was my other finished object it is kind of warm today so I don't want to give myself heat strike for a second time with that hat um, and now I've got some acquisitions let me just reach over and get them The lovely Eva from Eva Christie Hand Knitting Podcast sent me a very beautiful package um, around Christmas time and it was like I was so excited when it arrived and I opened it up and oh my god the box is full of goodness um, and these are just some of the things that were in the box. This book which is by Janice Galloway, The Trick Is To Keep Breathing. I haven't started it yet. I'm saving it. So I'm presently reading something else. So I am really looking forward to starting this. Um, I'm not familiar with, I don't, with Janice Galloway's work. I don't think I've read any other Janice Galloway that I recall. So I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be amazing. Thank you, Eva. The other thing she popped in, amongst all the other amazing treasures, What's this bag? And it's the Perth Festival of Yarn 2016. So cute, that she'd be. And Eva actually organised an actual yarn festival in her town of Perth in Scotland. Um, I'm so impressed with that. I cannot even begin to imagine how much hard work goes into organising a yarn festival or any sort of festival. Oh, I'm so impressed with that and I was so excited to get my own Perth Festival of Yarn souvenir because I'd been following um, Eva's amazing journey of organising and uh, that festival and then watching all the other um, people's videos and podcasts about the festival and it looked so amazing and I wished desperately that I could have gone so it was excellent to get that in the mail. But also, Eva is a very talented dyer 
and she sent me this most amazing skein of yarn. Oh my god, this colour. I can't even... It's like the colour of lily pollen. If you're familiar with that. You know that pollen from lilies, if you get it on your skin, it's basically impossible to wash off and it stains clothes and stuff. Um, that's the colour it is. It's like... Um, Oh, it's actually more, much more intense than what is showing on the screen. But, yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. And it is soft. And her yarn brand is called the Melted Moglet Dye Works. How cool is that? Love it. And this is a mystery base. I don't know what that means, but it feels delicious. And the colour name is Lord Summerside. That's so cool. I think that's what it says. Wait, no. Summer Isle. Maybe. <laughs> I haven't got my glasses on. It could say anything. Um, Summer Isle, I think it says. And it's 100 grams, 365 metres. And... <laughs> I can only just read this. I should have put glasses on. She's got written down the bottom of the label here. It's pretty cute. Inspired by the antics of the dastardly grumple stilt skin, <laughs> brewed under the watchful gaze of helpful knitting cats, Smeagol and Martha Bean in Perthshire, Scotland. So I wonder who... I don't know who grumple stilt skin is, but I like that name. I'm going to adopt that and use that. Uh, I can see it coming in handy. Uh, so that is it. And there's some stitch markers on the side, and this one in particular is the actual best. It's a sock, an enamel sock. I don't know where you found that, Eva, but it is so cool. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for everything that was in that box of treasures, Eva. That was the loveliest surprise to find. And what Eva doesn't know is that the box that it all arrived in, this one here, sorry, I'm just covering up anything there, this little box here. Um, earlier 2016, I ordered something online from the US and it arrived in that box. And then I kept that box because it was good, it's good size. And I packaged something up for a friend who lives in the US and I sent the parcel in that box. And then she sent me something back in that box. So stay with me here. This So far it's come from America to Australia, back to America, back to Australia. And then I packed up Eva, a present for Eva in that box and sent it to Scotland. And then Eva kept that box and packed up my little gift, my amazing box of treasures, in that box and sent it back to Australia. So it's gone America, Australia, Australia, America, America, Australia, Australia, Scotland, Scotland, Australia. And of course I'm going to keep it and use it to send some something to someone else. Um, and I didn't tell my friends that I was sending stuff to in that box, that that's what I would had done it's just obviously got to keep me reuse me vibe about it so it's done a fair bit of travel that box I'm, I'm impressed I'm very impressed so there's a little tidbit of fun <laughs> um, the weather here I haven't done a weather report yet I bet it's loaded in before I finish it is quite beautiful today it's warm niche it's not hot but it's warm um, I am wearing jeans today for the first time since I actually cannot even remember um, and it feels quite weird um, yeah I have been it's been way too hot to wear anything even vaguely resembling jeans um, for months and months and months here so it's, it's nice it's interesting it feels strange it feels cool uh, it's blazing sunshine outside I'm looking at the big windows just there there's a light breeze but not a lot and we're 
we're actually in for some very, very, very hot weather um, in the coming days. And wouldn't you know it, earlier in the week when it was 42 degrees, and it was, which is about 107 Fahrenheit, um, our air conditioner died. And it was very, very hot in the house. It was, oh God, it was quite painful and there was no cool change. No cool change came through, no breeze. Um, so we were literally just baking inside the house. Um, that was pretty painful. Thankfully, the air conditioning repair man lives just a couple of streets over and he was able to pop in last night and fix it. Uh, thank goodness, because we have got some very hot weather coming up. So um, I am very thankful for air conditioning. I'd totally forgotten what it felt like to not have air conditioning and then you just have to live in the heat. Um, this is the first time I've ever lived anywhere with air conditioning. Obviously, it doesn't take long to forget what it's like not to have it. Um, so, yes, very thankful for the air conditioning. <laughs> um, I really appreciate it now. So, I think I've covered everything. I've gone for a really long time because I had not podcasted in a very long time and uh, so I had loads to show. I think that's all now. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, I think I should see you again a little bit sooner this time. There won't be quite such a big gap, so I might not have quite as much to show you next time. Uh, thank you so much for joining me and sticking around. It's a bit of a long one. And I will see you all again really soon. Have a wonderful week. Bye.